Hi guys and girls, this is Mr. Mark. In this video, we're going over our circuits take-home quiz. Um, and so I'll go through each question individually and try to explain as best I can what's going on so that we can figure out what we know and we still need to correct before we do our test. So our first question says the resistance of an object is inversely proportional to what? We need to remember that resistance is directly proportional to the length of the resistor and to the resistivity of the um, proper or the material that's used to make it, and inversely proportional to the area. And so we have an equation, R equals rho L over A, and so the thing that's inversely proportional to the resistance would be the width. So for number one, we should have picked B. Question number two, which of the following is an expression of conservation of energy? That would be Kirchhoff's loop rule, so I would go with number C on that. The junction rule is a statement of conservation of charge, and Ohm's law is the relationship between current, voltage, and resistance. And then Watt's law, that's just something I made up. So we should go with the loop rule, that is our statement of conservation of energy in a circuit. In question number three, we're told that a certain light bulb creates 40 watts of thermal energy when it's connected to a 120 volt electrical outlet. And we're looking for the resistance of the light bulb. So since I know that P is equal to I times V, then I can calculate the current by dividing the power by the voltage. And so in this case, the current is one third of an ampere. Then I can use Ohm's law and solve for the resistance and so if I divide 120 volts by one-third ampere, that would give me a resistance of 360 ohms. So we should go with D on that one. Now there is an alternative way to do this. If we use P equals IV in conjunction with Ohm's law, then we can eliminate the I from the equation. In other words, we don't have to calculate the intermediate value of the current. And so the equation now becomes P equals V squared divided by R. And solving for R, that would give us V squared over P. And so that would be 120 squared divided by 40, which would also give you 360 ohms. So remember, we have three different equations for power, the thermal energy dissipated in a resistor. We can use them whenever appropriate. In question number four, we're told that two 6-ohm resistors are connected in series to a battery, which causes two amperes of current to flow through each one. So a simple circuit diagram would look like that. And then we're asked if the same resistors are connected in parallel, how much current would flow through each resistor then? So the first thing I would do would be to figure out the voltage of the battery. And so this circuit has an equivalent resistance of 12 ohms, and then using Ohm's law, I can calculate what the voltage is. And so that battery must have a voltage of 24 volts. So if I connect them in parallel instead, now they're not going to affect each other. And so I find the current by doing 24 volts divided by just 6 ohms individually, and I get 4 amperes. So that means each resistor has 4 amperes of current flowing through it. In questions 5 and 6, we're given the circuit that contains three resistors connected to a single battery. We're given the value of the resistors, um, but not necessarily the battery. The two questions ask us, first of all, which pair of resistors must have the same voltage across them in number 5, and which pair of resistors must have the same current through them in number 6. Well, we must remember that if two resistors are in parallel, that means they have to have the same voltage. That's the consequence of the loop rule. And so since R2 and R3 are in parallel, they have to have the same voltage. The next question asks us which pair of resistors have to have the same current. I know it can't be R2 and R3 because they have the same voltage but different resistances. That means they have to have different currents. I know it can't be the other two choices because the current going through, R, through R1 has to be equal to I2 and I3. So in other words, the currents going here and here 
add together to produce the current going through there. And so I know that the answer has to be D. None of them are going to have the same current. In question 7 and 8, we're given a circuit diagram that involves four resistors connected to a single battery, a 4-ohm and a 3-ohm resistor that are directly in series, and then a parallel branch consisting of a 10-ohm and a 40-ohm resistor. First thing that I would do would be to redraw the circuit like this. Figure out what the equivalent resistance is between the 10 and the 40-ohm resistor in parallel with each other. And so using the reciprocal rule, we get 1 over REQ equals 5 over 40, Invert it and then divide, REQ equals 8 ohms. So the value of that single resistor that acts like it's there is 8 ohms. Now we can figure out the current through the circuit. Use the uh, equivalent resistance of all those in series. And we get a current of 2 amperes. That means that each of those resistors in that picture has a current of 2 amperes. So solving for the voltage across that 8 ohm resistor, I would get a value of 16 volts. Again, remember that when they're in parallel, they both have that same voltage of 16 volts, and so we would go with an answer of B. To figure out question number 8, all I need to do is take those 16 volts, that's across the 10 ohm resistor, and divide by the 10 ohms. That will give you a current of 1.6, that should be amperes, which would correspond with C. So remember that when they are in parallel, they have the same voltage. So we found the voltage by using the equivalent resistance and the current through it, and then I can go back and use Ohm's Law again to figure out through the, the current through each one individually. And so the 10 ohm resistor has a current of 1.6. The 4 ohm resistor would have a current closer to 0.4 amperes. In question number 9, which is the free response question, we're given a circuit that consists of four resistors connected in a circuit where we know three of the resistors but not the fourth. We do know, however, that the fourth is larger than 20 ohms. And so the first thing we're asked to do is to rank the currents from greatest current to least current. Well, if we back up a little bit, if we remember that the two parts that are in parallel with each other have to have the same voltage, and then we recognize that this part of the circuit is going to have a resistance that's at least 60 ohms, because no matter what R4 is, you're going to take the parallel part and add it to 60. Then we can see that the current through I, the resistor 10, the 10 ohm resistor, has to be the largest. The current that goes to the 60 ohm resistor then has to be split between the 20 ohm resistor and R4. And since we know R4 is a larger resistor than 20, it's going to have the lowest current out of all of them. And so they'll go 10 ohm resistor be the largest, 60 ohm resistor, and then that current is going to be split between the 20 ohm resistor and R4. R4 is the smallest because it's got the highest resistance of those two. In the next part, we're told that the current flowing through the 60 ohm resistor is 0.25 amperes, and the current through the 20 ohm resistor is 0.15 amperes. And we're asked to first of all calculate the value of R4. Well, I know that the current through, I, through um, resistor 4 is going to be 0.1 amperes. The current that goes through the 60 ohm resistor is split between the 20 ohm resistor and R4, and so 0 0.15 plus 0 0.1 adds back up to 0.25. So again, that's Kirchhoff's junction rule. Next thing I know is that the 4 ohm, or excuse me, R4 is going to have the same voltage as the 20 ohm resistor since they're in parallel. That's a consequence of Kirchhoff's loop rule. And so by taking the current and the resistance for the 20 ohm resistor, I can figure out the voltage across the 20 ohm resistor, which is 3 volts. That has to be the same for R4. 
And so now that I know both the current and the voltage, I can use Ohm's law to calculate the resistance. And so R4 must be 30 ohms. The last part of the question asks us to find the current through the 10 ohm resistor. In order to figure out what that current is, I first need to know the voltage. Remember, it's in parallel with this part of the circuit. And so if I can figure out the voltage of that part of the circuit, then I know the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor. And so the voltage through the 60 ohm resistor, we can find from Ohm's law, it's 15 volts. And then if I add up the voltages across that part, the net voltage would be 18 volts. Going from 60 ohm through the 20 ohm resistor, add up the voltages, I would get 18 volts. And so the voltage across the 10 ohm resistor must be 18 volts. And so using Ohm's law, we would get a current of 1.8, I did it again, and this should be amperes. That's the last question on our quiz. If anything that I've said doesn't make sense or you still can't figure out where you're going wrong, please let me know. Otherwise, try to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes you may have made on your quiz on your test, which is next time. Thanks, and bye-bye.